Being known by name is the ambition of every hairdresser. But the road to being a top stylist involves years of training and experience. Although anyone can call themselves a hairdresser, there are proper training schemes for apprentices. And it's not just a job for girls, there are many boys. Andrew is in his first year. When did he decide about it? When I was in the careers office and I saw a um, poster on the wall which said to be a hairdresser you need art, you've got to get on with people, you mustn't be allergic to chemicals and a few other things. So I thought I'd try the hairdressing. You've got to do all the, all the dirty work as such, you know, sweep up, shampoo, you've got to take all the orders. But I think it, it, it is part of the training and it's like a discipline, really. I mean, they say the apprentices which stick out all the dirty work make good hairdressers. Shampooing is the closest Andrew gets to real hairdressing at this stage. But he does stay late one night each week to practice cutting on volunteers. It's called model night. If I wasn't doing model night, I would probably be wasting my time anyway. I mean, if it's someone who's, who hasn't got that time, then I suppose it'd be different, but I've, I don't mind. I'm learning something. If I miss a model night, then I'm not, I'm not learning anything. I can't believe shampooing is a very important part of um, you know, hairdressing yeah. because it puts the clients in a relaxed frame of mind. Do Andrew's mates think that this is a rather soft job for a boy? A lot of them did, but if you look at it, most of the top hairdressers are men. You know? Most of the famous hairdressers, they are men. I mean, my friends know me and they know that I'm not soft. One day each week, Andrew goes to his local college in Harrow. He's doing a city and guilds course. But today we're going to do an elevated cut. And all we're going to think of is the shape of the head. Right? And we're going to take our sections at the college, Andrew gets a thorough training in the practical skills of hairdressing. But since he also gets this back at work, is the college training useful? Mm? We get like the theory, like things that a lot of the stylists don't tell us. Maybe they just haven't got the time to tell us. Maybe they just don't think about it because they haven't really been trained to teach. You know? Whereas the teacher has been trained to teach. So it's good at college because you do learn the theory. You learn a lot of important things. Take your section down the centre. And here again we start to lift up very slightly until we see our line. Right? But the angle is different. So in other words, if we refer to the board, all right, so you can see the angle that, that actually the hair will be cut at, can't you? As compared. In other words, if, if we pull this out. Andrew will learn all the techniques of cutting and then practice them on artificial hair. Using scissors and combs like this requires nimble fingers. First, and then if you'd like to take the section at the back, then we can start the cut. Yeah, you've got to scratch it. Make sure you pull all the way from the roots now. Take a straight section. Keep it well pulled now, you see, first of all. The base section holds straight down. As well as the practical skills of hairdressing, Andrew does other subjects, such as science. This is the hair colorist circle. This session is about the results of mixing colored dyes. Is science like this all that useful to a hairdresser? You've got to know the science because you've got to know about not just the person's hair, but what's inside their hair, what's inside their head. You know, when you're putting on a tint, you've got to know what you're really doing chemically. Now, this circle is used by artists in order to predict what's going to happen when you mix colours of various sorts. You take your wool and the appropriate colour, remember you dip into the dye, the white end first, and then you overlap them on half the ready dyed lengths. So we see the two colours we've actually mixed, and in the middle we see the product colour. 
all the work done at the college is useful in the job and you get a chance to see the way things are done away from the pressures of a working salon. At a salon, life is always busy and as an apprentice you might have to do odd jobs like looking after reception. Liana is a second year apprentice at her father's salon. Because she cancelled her appointment, she was supposed to be at half past ten. She cancelled it, she came in half past ten. Yes, past. all right, Liana, but you've got another... Did Liana's father expect her to follow in his footsteps? He always wanted me to do something else. But then when, when he found out that I wanted to do hairdressing, he used to make me... Well, he asked me to go in on, during the holidays to, um, you know, get an idea of what it's like to work a full week, not just Saturdays, because you can't really get an idea just by Saturdays. They wanted me to really be sure before I, you know, made any sort of de definite arrangement about it. Can you make the appointment? I'll send phone, please. Jack's a rice slip. Can I help you, please? Um, yes, what shampoo Does Liana get special treatment from her father? No, because always having worked there on Saturdays and everything, they got to know me more as me and not as the boss's daughter. When a new girl starts at the shop, I don't even like telling her that I'm the boss's daughter for the first couple of days, even though she always finds out. I feel that if she knows that from the beginning, she might look at me in a different way. At college, Liana continues with her day release course. How useful, though, is a subject like art? Hairdressing is something you've got to, well, it's best to have some sort of artistic flair in it, and it, it helps you to sort of bring yourself out, put it that way, you can, you know, put it down on paper, whereas otherwise you just think of it in your head, you can't do it. But once you've got a pen and paper there, you can try and put down what you've got in your mind, even if it's not always the right thing, but... And if you can get the... Let's just have a look at your pencil. It's not too bad. I think you want to come out a little bit further here with this movement of, of the hair. And if this is coming round in a wave, so that you've got that front movement, coming a bit further out, but you've also got that going behind it so that you've got the impression of the hair going... In the second year of her apprenticeship, Liana is still learning the practical side and she's now doing jobs like tinting. The customers are volunteers. Yes, um, it's a tint. Looks at the roots. I think it's been about... Is it a permanent tint or semi-permanent? Permanent. Yes, how can you tell that? Because of the regrowth. All right, how long is it since the dry last had about the colour. So four or five weeks. Yes. What sort of colour? How would you describe? Is this the oh. brown? Is it blonde? It's a warm brown. A warm brown. Yes. Jobs like tinting, setting and perming involve chemicals and the college explains the dangers. If you're at work, you like I say, you don't really know what's going on to the hair. Why say if you have a perm, you don't know why it goes curly. But here you learn and you can see what happens if you say leave the perm on too long. You can see what happens. No, it depends. Sometimes it's more resistant. You can see the roots at the back. So, you're going to start around this area uh -huh. here, and then where? Straight down, take a parting down the middle. Yes. And then take two partings to the... That's right, like a hot Yeah. And then you're going to work up one side. Yeah, and up the other. Up the side. Then All right. Right, so what colour did we decide on, Diana? Um, well, that one, something in the region of... Yes. So it gives a depth of a five in a honey gold. Yeah. Excellent choice. Yes. They're all taught properly, yeah. so you know you're getting the best well, service. Really no, I think it's word of mouth. You know, they get yeah. uh, more or less my natural colour originally. And um, I just come one day a week. Oh, your day release. Yes. But I'm in my second year now and I'm finishing my. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if the weather's not so good. Yeah. Yes, but it certainly keeps the grey away, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what I'd look like if I didn't have it in today, though. Right, do you think that's ready? Yes. Right. Use a special shampoo for removing tint. Take Lady Emma. Liana is now doing more and she finds it very satisfying. You know, if a client comes in and she, let's face it, she puts herself in your hands and you just, you try to please her as well, so she, she's usually happy with the result and you're happy with what you've done. You, you know, you feel as though you've sort of, you've achieved something. You can look at her and think, oh, well, she's better than when she came in, you know. <laughs> she looks a lot better. Liana's father's salon is very busy and gets quite crowded. Do the staff get on each other's nerves sometimes? 
you know, you're sort of, you're so busy most of the time that you don't really see that much of each other. You're not really all together in the staff room at the same time. It's the sort of job that you might see each other to say good morning, in the, you know, first thing in the morning. You might not see each other till about half past ten again, not to actually talk to. Now, which way is the set? And it's this on the larger shoulders. Yes. They feel as though they're safe in your hands if you look smart and you've always got to be clean and tidy and your hair's nice and they feel more sort of willing to relax while you're doing their hair but if, if they come in and you like just sort of got out of bed you know they they don't want to come and pay money for you to do their hair when you look so scruffy doing an apprenticeship is not the only way to become a hairdresser some colleges run full-time courses in hairdressing Traces in her first year. Why did she decide to do this rather than get an apprenticeship? I think mainly because I've seen my friends go through an apprenticeship and for the first year they are mainly just a dog's body. They do the same as they do on a Saturday. They do shampooing, they make tea, they sweep up. They don't get a chance to get in and have a go. So I thought, well, and when I said to my friend that I was going to do a course at college, she said, well, she said, you don't get the practical side of it and so on. But I thought, well, I was willing to make that chance. And then blend it in again. The course includes many other activities besides hairdressing and so could lead to careers in makeup and beauty work. For a few exceptional people, it could lead to jobs in television, film and theatre. Your lips are fairly large. I've got a hair there. The course lasts for two years, and at some colleges you'll need qualifications to get in. You'll also need to make some sacrifices, because you have to buy your own equipment. It works out very expensive. We have to buy everything down to the last piece of paper. Um, we have to buy uh, rollers, pins, etc. Um, also books, ovals. Education is free up to the age of 18, which means I'll be OK for two years, as I'm only 16 now. So far, I've been here 10 weeks, and it has worked out roughly to about £200, which really isn't bad, considering it is going to be for two years, as long as I look after it. <laughs> Hold your head up so you don't breathe on it. That's better. Good. I'll make sure you press it up and keep it tight there. That's so fun. Some of the activities, like wig making, require great patience, and not everybody likes it, as Tracy found out. I think wig making is a subject that you either like or you dislike. There is no in between, there's no happy medium. At the moment, it is, seems to be a bit um, dragged out, I suppose. Um, but now we're going on to making uh, pin curls and uh, little top knots, and, and it's, a, it's a bit more enjoyable. For the people who enjoy detailed, highly skilled work, jobs like wig making could provide an enjoyable and well-paid career. The full-time course also includes men's hairdressing. As unisex salons develop, people who can do both men's and ladies' hairdressing will find many good opportunities for work. How are you doing, Tracy? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're keeping those sections coming out. That's right. Make sure. Very much. I'm no, but, and... but make sure you comb from the roots right the way out, at right angles, mm -hmm. all that way out. Tracy gets the same detailed help with men's styling as she did with women's. In fact, she likes it a lot. I prefer men's hairdressing. I don't particularly like doing ladies. The fact that men are fussier than women. <laughs> I think the women just say to you, well, I want it done like this. They give you a piece of paper with a photo on it. I mean, they don't go into the details of the shape of the face or anything. But men, they're, they're really funny. They say, no, not this bit. This bit's all right. And, and it's, it's more enjoyable because you can have a better conversation with a male than you can with a female. Whether you do your training as an apprentice in a salon or on the full-time course, at the end of it you'll be a fully-fledged stylist. It might be in a high street salon like this, or in a department store, or in a little shop away from the town centre.
stretched your work. Wherever you work, your view of the job will be influenced by having to do it day after day. Like Jill, is it what she expected? Yes, I, yeah, I thought it would be it would be hard work. It's quite um, strenuous, you know. You have to sort of be thinking of so many things at once, especially at weekends. You know, when you're very busy. But um, yes, I think it's everything I thought it would be. I think the college training, you know, it it um, helps you to think sort of ahead of what it's going to be like. It's quite tiring. You have to be. I think you have to be fairly fit to do this sort of work. And of course, it's weekends, working at weekends as well, where you miss out perhaps on things at weekends. And perhaps you get a day off during the week where it's sort of fairly quiet. I'm starving, actually. You can't just suddenly stop at 12 o'clock and take lunch for an hour. You know, you just have to usually fit it in where you can, really. You should get a Sunday. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes you're dealing with perhaps four, maybe five clients at once, you know. It's, you've got to be sort of everywhere at once, really, and <coughs> thinking about four things at once, you know. You want to get cut quite short, yes? Yes, yes, yes please, just, you know, something natural. But if you've got style, you do it. You're going to get somewhere special tonight. They so look for advice, I would say, yes. We have uh, fashion books that we can show them, sort of, you know, give them a general idea of what, you know, what we mean. You can convince them that what we think is, you know, is best. It's quite fine, isn't it? Okay. Jesus, Perhaps once yes. it's dried, it look quite yeah. much thicker. If you can do anything to make it thicker, it would be lovely. Cut <laughs> <laughs> a few bits in it. The art classes Jill did at college help her see what the hairstyle will look like before she starts. You sort of build up pictures in your mind first. You see the finished article before you actually start, really. The uh, problem is perhaps sometimes explaining this to the client, of, you know, actually what it will look like in the end. Not really taking the length too much, too short. It's just the layers, really, that mm. need to be a bit shorter to get it to curl a bit better. You've been here before to have your hair cut? No, no, we've left my little boy and my mother, so she lives locally, so she... Do you have it cut often, or...? I think you have to be um, sympathetic and always ready to listen and be easy to talk to and uh, listen to people's problems. So I think people do tend to pour out their troubles to the hairdresser because you come here to relax and perhaps pour your problems out to them. This job should appeal to you if you're fit, if you get on well with people, like working with your hands and like creating things. Whatever your ambition, this job provides many opportunities. I think if you're ambitious enough, some, a lot of people just, they're content to just be a stylist, but I just, I'm just not, I want to make money. Maybe it's not as glamorous as I'm making out, but I'd like to think it is. I really wanted to go into the airport and their hotels. And another thing that came into my mind, which is very hard to get into, which you have a chance in a minute, is trying to get on the cruise liners. Well, I want to stay with my dad. I want to stay where I am now. I wouldn't even consider sort of changing my job for at least another five years. I want to get a lot of practice. There we are. Finished. Mm. That's very nice. It's a satisfying job. You feel, at the end of the day, you feel as if, you know, you've, you've done something worthwhile, really. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks very much On BBC Two now, Brian Redhead and David Tench sort out financial fact from fantasy in That's the Way the Money Goes. And at 3.30, Delia Smith offers advice on preparing poultry in her cookery course. At 4 o'clock, the series Modern Language Teaching looks at methods used at the Thomas Beckett Upper School in Northampton. And those are, our, are the programmes this afternoon on BBC Two. Our next programme here is on BBC One is Songs of Praise from Wrexham at 3.15.
for now, the time's just coming up to one minute past three, and for the time being, BBC One is returning... <laughs> This is BBC Scotland. I started work for the first time when I was 12 years old. A grocer come anything at all, it sold everything from trees to hairpins to fruit, vegetables and cans, etc. I decided that I didn't really have enough money at that age to buy the things I wanted. So for the next two years I worked in that shop, Saturdays and Sundays and holidays, which gave me, you know, enough pocket money, etc., to live on. I enjoyed meeting the people, but most of the time it was very, very monotonous. June Summers is now 18. She comes from Renton in Dumbartonshire. And though she found that first part-time job very boring, she decided to leave school as soon as she could. I didn't want to do anything in particular in school, so I left and I took a job in Boots the Chemist, working in toiletries, makeup, etc. And at that time, I was getting 7 50 a week. There wasn't any prospects at all. But the only way I was going to advance myself was getting all levels. So I spoke to the rector and he very kindly took me back for another year and I studied and got my art O level, English O level and arithmetic O level. So I began thinking about what I wanted to do and I thought about the makeup. So I decided that if I wanted to do makeup, I was going to have to, you know, really stick in the art. I think in the last year when I did go back, I was more for learning. I thought, well, we've got another year here, so study, make good use of it. As soon as I left school, I went to the careers people locally. They couldn't really tell me anything much about makeup, except that you'd probably need hairdressing. So rather than do three years in a shop, I decided it'd be more worthwhile to do two years full time at college. Clydebank Technical College was where June decided to go for her hairdressing training. She didn't find that the application procedures created any problems. To get into a college, you have to fill in a form. You then go to the college, you get interviewed and you sit an entrance exam, which is just um, common knowledge. And if you pass that and they're satisfied with your appearance and your ambitions, then they take you in. When I first arrived there, it was more or less the same as school. I thought, you know, it's not much different, the classrooms, etc. But then on up to the hairdressing department, it's like a different world. They had three different salons, which are very large, and just like normal hairdressing salons. The real difference from school, I think, is probably the people. Everyone at college is there to learn a certain trade, whether it's day release or whether they're there, there full time. You have everything from plumbing, brickwork, to secretarial, hairdressing. And you have students who are perhaps sitting higher, so all levels. But you meet so many different people doing different jobs. And it's a much different atmosphere. The atmosphere is much, much better. It's not a teacher-pupil relationship. It's more a sort of, you're there to learn. And they don't say, you must do this, you must do that. They make suggestions. They let you think about it. You try it, you discover it works or you discover you've found a better way. It's not, this is my way, it must be done this way. I'm managing, Jim. Fine. Don't be taking okay. two deep sections. Though. No, I'm trying to take it the same size as the... The roller. The roller, yeah. In colleges like Clyde Bank, there's a much freer atmosphere than in many schools, especially in the non-teaching areas. And through their elected representatives, the students have some say in the running of the college. 
June is very happy here and certainly prefers college training to working in a hairdressing shop. I think colleges are for hairdressing is much better than a shop. If you go into a shop, you have a boss who trains you perhaps for one night a week. Well, at college, you get trained five days a week. And they're not doing things for you. As soon as you go into college, you, you start work. You put in rollers, you start cutting, perming, tinting in a shop. You perhaps, for the first year, sweep up, make tea, clean the mirrors. But you don't really learn hairdressing until your second year. Sometimes, special care is needed with a client. This girl is only 13, and this is the first time in her life that her hair has been cut. Considerable tact is sometimes needed in hairdressing. Having your hair cut for the very first time can be a very emotional moment. Though, like most other students, she gets a grant of over £200 from her local education authority, June still needs to earn more money. So she works from Friday night until Monday morning as a hotel receptionist. Good afternoon, City Hotel. Can I help you? It's not a case of sitting back, handing out keys, um, making up bills. If you don't have a boss in hand, you have all the problems of the hotel. If the waitress doesn't turn up for duty, it's your job to find another one. If someone won't pay their bill, you try and talk them out of leaving without paying. It's a very, very hard life, a town life. The hours are very irregular. Plus, you have an awful lot of responsibilities. The cash you have in the drawer is your responsibility. If it goes, it's up to you to make it up. If you're out, say, £10 at the end of the week, then it's £10 of your wages. Every penny must be accounted for. Hairdressing, it's a creative art. You're using your hands, you're, you're making new styles. It's, it's a, like an extension of art, because you get various shapes of faces and not every hairstyle suits them. Part of the training is learning to talk to people, learning to communicate. In hairdressing, you have to be a very good listener. On Wednesday, it was pretty cold, and I was over at my friend, as usual. And on Thursday, at an early rise, I'd come over and see Mr Langlands. Then I was up, and Mary done my nails. Do you like them? Nice colour. Oh, lovely. Huh? getting longer. Yes. You find Quite you're doing a lot more listening than talking. You just start the conversation and keep it going. And whether you're a bad hairdresser or not, as long as she can communicate with you and tell your problems, she thinks you're fantastic. June, breakfast? Coming. I usually wake her about quarter to seven in the morning. She's very good at getting up in the morning. No bother at all for her. And, of course, it's her usual scramble in the morning, getting all her things, getting her bag organised and all our equipment for the salon. Mondays, Tuesday and Wednesday, she's not here at all till nine o'clock at night because she has classes on, evening classes. And it's nine o'clock, well, the time she comes down, she's ready for her bed then. She really hasn't very much in the social life. <laughs> And of course, she has to work at the weekend because she needs money for clothes and she spends quite a lot of money on clothes and makeup. But on the other hand, she doesn't spend a lot of money on pleasure. When June left school, when she was 15, we weren't really happy about it. So, of course, uh, she had taken a job that summer 
and we're quite glad when she decided to go back to school again. So since she's been to college, we've been quite happy with the results. And uh, she's doing something that she really wanted to do. The date the college starts when we arrive at nine o'clock. We go straight to the salon and we set up. We put out rollers, combs, scissors, everything we're likely to need. Then, as soon as we've set up and we've got gowns, capes and everything out, we go through to the reception area and we take a lady and we ask her for her card, her treatment card. Now this card tells us what treatment she's had in the past if she's been having her hair tinted, what was used, how long it was put on for, and what the end result was. Now this is a great help. We then take her back, we sit her down, and we decide what treatment we're going to give her. Did you see this stuff? It was in a magazine. Soft curls, just you know, along my forehead, yes. and then down to curls at the back. But it was smooth, you know, from about the crown down to about there. Smooth from here down to, down to here, and there. then curls and then all curls the way around. Down, right there, right. Yeah. Well, apart from hairdressing, we do manicuring, beauty therapy, gents' hairdressing, shaving, and anything else we're likely to come across in a shop. We trained in every aspect of hairdressing. Personally, I love men's hairdressing. I think it's a very, very interesting job, but it's not one I'd like to do all the time. But I think it's important to be able to do it. Manicuring is very, very enjoyable if you can get a good hand and the nails are good. and. If you do a good job on the hand, you get a great sense of achievement out of it. So I was thinking of using her as a model for the competition and using her nails for the manicuring exam. The first makeup we learn is for ourselves, how to apply our own correctly, and what's the best way to make ourselves more presentable. And then the course goes on to how to treat other people, how to do face massage and eyebrow plucking and general beauty therapy. Apart from hairdressing, we have English, art, science, and board work. We learn how to write letters, if we should ever manage a shop, how to fill out forms. In art, we learn how to mix colors, and how to put hairstyles on um, faces. In science we learn what chemicals are put into tints. We learn how much strength the hair has and um, what the hair contains. All of the science relates to hairdressing and it's very important. Well, June, uh, this is the nearest perfect hair you're looking at now. Uh, you see it's got medulla and the protein structure there. And we'll now look at a slide before treatment. What do you see in this one, Jim? The hair's in very bad condition. It has no colour pigment at all, no proteins present in the hair. No, it's not the colour pigment. This is a protein structure that you're seeing. There's no green protein structure there, that's right. Now we'll look at one that's after the treatment. The colour pigment... The, the protein's now present in the hair. Gymnastics isn't a compulsory subject of the college, but June takes an active part in the classes because they help her to keep fit and attractive.
and girls, onto your back. In the little spare time I have, um, I usually like eating out or perhaps going dancing. The hotel I work in just now, it doesn't really have much. It does high tea, but it's the same night after night. So for a change, usually I go out and have a meal in perhaps an Italian restaurant. When I told my parents I was going back to school, they were very happy. They didn't, they didn't ever want me to do a shop work because they, they knew there were no prospects in that. And they're very glad that I'm going on learning. At first I was a bit depressed because I wasn't putting any money into the home. But my parents have been really fantastic. They've been re really very good and they've helped me a lot in my training. My younger sister, Morag, is 15 and she's having exactly the same problems I had. But she's decided to wait until she gets her own levels, see her results before deciding what to do. Elizabeth Hamilton is in charge of the hairdressing department at Clyde Bank. Very often young people come into hairdressing and they've got this idea that it's a glamorous job. Well, it's certainly not a glamorous job. It's a very hard job, but it also is a very satisfying job in that all day long you're seeing results for what you're doing. So therefore at the end of the day, um, you maybe have worked very hard, but you've had an end product. You've got something to show for what you've been doing. Quite often a child who's not done well at all in school comes into further education and excels. And the reason for this is for the first time they've uh, found something that they enjoy doing and the extra effort they're putting in, being self-motivated, they do really well and lots of youngsters mature much later so therefore they're really only starting to work for the first time when they're 16. Sometimes a young person leaves school they just want to get out of this situation where they're forced, they're compelled to do uh, English, arithmetic or whatever. They leave school and then they realise that if they had done some work in school they would have been equipped better to, to cope with a job and then they, they decide that well they'll have to come back and uh, further education is the place they go. Then they discover they're now treated as adults and the emphasis had been moved. It's al altered from their teachers and their uh, parents' problem. It's now become their problem. And they start to think about this and generally that's when the, the transition takes place that they have now taken on the responsibility of learning to do whatever career they've decided on. Every job you do entails some learning and if you're going to learn at all, you're best getting the best possible teaching and I think college gives you this. I think it's important when you do start work that you're happy in your job. I think I'd describe myself as a very busy person. <laughs> I don't really have much time to myself. I spend most of my time working, but I'm very happy in the work that I do.